Well, first of all, you need to know a couple of things. One is at 4.30 this morning, we got a call that mom was going to the hospital. Uh, that's just part of life when your mom's 91, right? And some of the rest of you understand that completely because you've either been going to the hospital yourselves or you've been following moms and dads and people along. She has a mild case of congestive heart failure. So I'll be leaving after my sermon today and going to be with my mother, which is what a young man's supposed to do, right? Yeah. So uh, just, uh, I, I, I'm not really, I didn't even think twice about this because of Brian and Leah, right? I mean, uh, y'all are fine. Uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Uh, the second thing is, uh, I got to marry uh, Scott and Lisa Anderson last night at uh, Highland Park United Methodist Church. Scott is now a married man. Uh, I know that the youth group is upset about that because uh, I watched Lisa walk into church uh, the first time when Scott brought her the first time to church here. And I watched them and then I looked over to the youth group and I watched the girls and the boys, and especially the girls, and the girls were going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happened, right? But they're so happy and it was such a joy getting to do that ceremony in Highland Park and I went to this church. And, that church's graciousness to let a, a pastor from Green Prairie come over and, and be there in their, their wonderful sanctuary. <laughs> but it was, it was a great, great time. And as uh, Dr. Anderson Scott's dad, Alan, said, uh, you didn't fumble one time, I was so proud of you. I said, yeah, man, you didn't work out. So that's the way it works. Those are the two things I want to let you know first and foremost. This third thing I want to let you know, this is a powerful passage of Scripture. I've been living with it all week long. Jesus is in the temple. It's his, the same week he goes to the cross. He's in the temple teaching. He looks over and he watches rich people throw some money, probably lots of money and stuff in the, in the treasury box. And then he watches a widow come up. We don't know if she's an old widow, young widow, but a widow, a poor widow come up and two half pennies together, two very small copper coins, and she drops them in and walks away. And he says, did you notice what just happened? Are you paying attention? <laughs> the rich people gave out of their abundance, but she gave out of poverty everything she had to give. Everything. All week long, I've been thinking, how could she do that? So I came up with some answers. That's my job, right? I thought, first, first, she must have good kids. Amen? She must have good kids. Because she doesn't have to worry about those two copper coins, does she? She can put them in because she knows she can go home and her kids are going to provide her some food and they're going to provide her some shelter and most likely the grandkids are going to come and, and grab her legs and hug her as soon as she walks in the door. Right? Isn't that what's supposed to happen? Because what is the, what is the Lord our God said? You shall honor your father and your mother so that they go well with you in your old age. Right? What does that mean? It means if you'll take care of your, your parents you might get lucky and your kids just might take care of you too. That's how that works. It's the way God set things up. The Ten Commandments are not just a bunch of rules. They're just the smart way to live life. Smart way to live life. And God says, if you'll do it this way, it will go well for you. So that's why I'm going home this afternoon, right? How can I not? How can I not? Because, you see, that's what my mom and dad did. My grandmother Long lived with us from the time I was in the sixth grade. My mother is a saint. Just want to let you know that. <laughs> Do you know the difference between in-laws and outlaws? <laughs> outlaws are wanted. <laughs> My grandmother Long, God bless her soul. She resides in heaven, not because of the way she treated my mother. Or at least she's not in hell because of the way she treated my mother. I'll put it that way. It wasn't always pretty. 
Mom was walking with Tilly. Mom is 19 years old. Mom and Dad have been married for over a year at this point. Walking along the sidewalk with my grandma Tilly. Isn't that a great name? Tilly. She was Tilly. I hear it too. Tilly. And she says, Mom, Frank and I are going to have a baby. And my grandmother says, I knew it would happen. <laughs> My mother and father took care of my grandmother alone. Not because she was easy, but because that's what you do. Right? That's just what you do. Are you kids listening? When your folks get old, you take care of them because that's just what you do. I think this, this widow might have been okay because her kids took care of her. And you know, you can let go of the money when you know you've got good kids. Right? You know you can. But what if she didn't have any children? Could be, right? Some people don't have kids. I think in that case, most likely she had a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law or a brother or a sister that said, we're so sorry about your husband, but you always have a home with us. Have you ever heard those words spoken? You'll always have a home with us. You see, that might have been why she was okay too, because she had somebody in the family that stepped up and, and made room. You know, these folks didn't live in big houses. They were very small. More like the size of half of one of our restrooms out there. Very small places to live. Just enough room to have a fire and everybody kind of bumped next to each other along the walls and near as the fires they could in the wintertime. They didn't have a lot of room, so to, to add one more body probably wasn't easy, but you know, that's just what you do. Just what you do. Because sometimes doing the right thing is, is incredibly hard on the outside, but what does it do to us on the inside? Right? You know you're good. You know you've done the right thing. When you know you've done the right thing, something happens inside, doesn't it? You, you, you know. And, it, and it's a good thing. You don't feel bad about the problems that it brings up. You feel good about the fact that you're a good person. You've done the, the right thing. It makes a difference in our lives when we do the right thing, doesn't it? I think she could drop those coins in because somebody else had done right by her. But then there's a third reason. I think all her life God had come through for her. I believe that God had been there for her and she was not worried about tomorrow. I think she was there for the Sermon on the Mount. And she heard Jesus talk about the lilies of the field that neither spin nor toil. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be tomorrow. Just, just do what you got to do today. Take care of today. And she wasn't worried about letting go of that. She let it go, didn't she? Because she knew God had a hold of her and she was going to be okay. You know, us preachers, we learn things after a while. Uh, I had to learn the hard way too many times. When I was in the company, I hate to even say which town it was, but I was in the Coma, Texas. I was 32 years old, wet behind the ears. Not, nothing about you, Brian, but I was uh, wet behind the ears. And I figured out this little finance campaign. I read about it, you know, in a book. And it's where you, you say that so many people give under $100, and so many people give between $100, $200, $200, $500, $500, 1000 How many people give in each category? You know, we just bump, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we got this little finance campaign going, and, and it said 5000 and up, zero. 
Zero people in that church gave 5,000 and up. Everybody was under the 5,000 at this time. This is in the, in the mid-80s, okay, so there's inflation since then, right? The only problem was we had seven people in that church that probably been a million dollars a year. And I had thought that through. You see, everybody looked at that 5,000 and up and it said zero, and they all went, huh? Now that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one can afford to give the entire budget if they tithe. At that point. And I got in trouble. There was a stink. Now, it wasn't about that. You know how it works, right? It wasn't about that. It was about everything else that the preacher was doing wrong. What about that? But it was amazing where it was coming from. And it happened, happened to be with the people that, you know, out of their abundance, kept it. Now, last time I looked, if you make a million dollars a year, you've got $900,000 left after tithing, right? Come on. I can do math. Anybody here think they can handle living on $900,000 a year? I don't know. <laughs> Take me a few years, but I'll get there. <laughs> Out of their abundance, they give. And she gave how much? Everything. Isn't it amazing how the more we make, the more we think we need? You see, she had faith that God would provide. And I think sometimes we get tight. We've got the provisions already. I'm going to brag on my mom this morning. Frank, my brother and I have been having to go through her finances and figure out how much she can afford to do and this, that, and the other, and yada, yada. And my mom's income, I'll just tell you, is $2,000 a month as a retired teacher. And that includes my father's Social Security share. Not much, right? We treat our teachers right. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's what she makes. And every month as we look through her check register, there was a $200 check written to the church. Every single month. That's my mom. Why do you think I feel so obligated now it's not a bad, it's a good obligation. But why do you think I feel so obligated to do right by a woman who's always done the right thing? Do you hear me? Yeah. That's the way it works. You see, God knows. And there's something about doing the right thing that makes us right inside, even if it's hard on the outside. Do what you gotta do because it's who we are. It's who we are. And the last time I looked, I think it's a wonderful gift to be able to give something to children's first. Don't you? To think that I, I made a difference in a kid's life. And to be able to put something in the offering plate at this church, that's a privilege. And remember, everybody touches the plate, right? Just in case you weren't here last week, everybody gets to touch it whether you put something in it or not. Because I've been getting way too many people coming up the plate didn't come to me because somebody didn't think they needed to pass it. And I get your offer. And I don't want to get your offer. I want it to go in the plate. So pass it on. If you're more ambulatory, take care of those who are less ambulatory, right? Be gracious. We as a church keep thinking, what does it mean? What does it really mean to be who we are? To do the right thing. What does that really mean? Because that's what Jesus was saying that day. But there's one more thought that came to mind. When was this Holy Week? She put two 
small copper coins in the treasury. And later that week, a soldier took two rusty nails, but Jesus gave it all. Gave it all. I think what she did was to allow Jesus to be widow-like. Or maybe she was already Christ-like. Jesus knew exactly what she was doing. And she gave him the example of the trust in God that you got to have to really give it all. Don't you know that was comforting to him? To see her do that, knowing what he was going to do on Friday. Thanks be to God for widows. And thanks be to God for Jesus, who notices. And thanks be to God to all God's children who do what they got to do. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your gifts to us, for the way you provide. And Lord, thank you that we will always be able to trust in you, knowing that the children of their kingdom will look after us, and your spirit will fill us, and we will not be turned empty away. Help us be those who do what we have to do and to care deeply for all of your people. For it's in Jesus' name we pray.